Hello, welcome to this National Credit Union Administration webinar, Financial Readiness Resources and Information for Service Members, Veterans, and Their Families. I'm Ken Worthy, Financial Literacy and Outreach Analyst with NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection. I will be your moderator for this broadcast. Please follow along on the screen as I review the information for the best viewing experience. Please adjust the volume on your computer so that you can hear the webinar clearly. To increase the size of your slides, drag the bottom right corner of the presentation viewer. Please allow pop-ups from the site for it to function properly. Download the presentation by clicking on the PDF file under the resource widget. Use the Ask a Question feature on the left side of your console at any time in order to ask a question. We hope to address these questions at the end of the webinar if time permits. This webinar will be closed captioned and available for on-demand viewing on ncua.gov in the coming weeks. On the slide now is a rundown of what we plan to cover during this webinar. In just a moment, Office of Consumer Financial Protection Director, Matthew Bellaris will kick off this broadcast with his opening remarks on the importance of financial readiness and financial literacy for our service members, veterans, and their families. Joshua Dipert, a U.S. Armed Forces veteran and current Navy reservist, will give us his firsthand account of what it was like to be a young soldier navigating through complex and incredibly important financial decisions. Not only does Mr. Dipert help defend our country, he also serves in the Division of Consumer Affairs here at NCUA, protecting consumers and credit union members. Then Shamika Sutton, the Director of the Division of Consumer Affairs in the Office of Consumer Financial Protection, will share some of NCUA's financial literacy and consumer financial protection resources, including our military commun community-focused resources. Following Director Sutton, we will conclude our program with a presentation from our special guest, Ms. Michelle Glass, Program Manager with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's Office of Service Member Affairs. Ms. Glass will provide an overview of one of the Bureau's interactive learning tools for service members and their families at MIMM.gov. Then we will take some of your questions. Before we begin, please remember, that the views and opinions expressed during this broadcast are those of the presenters and do not reflect the official views of, nor should be considered an endorsement by, the National Credit Union Administration's Board of Directors, its management, or staff. Now, Director Belarus with his opening remarks. Thank you, Ken, and welcome to all who are listening to this webinar. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us. Also, I would like to thank our CFPB guests for joining the broadcast to share resources on this important topic. And of course, my own staff who put this program together, Josh for his service to the country and for sharing his experiences with all of us. Next week, many of us will reflect on what we are thankful for. So I want to start by thanking our military community for protecting our nation and our freedom. We honor and give thanks to the brave men and women of the armed forces our veterans and their families. Thank you for your enduring commitment and service to our nation. Veterans Day was just last week, and this month is National Military Family Month. Both of these events for our veterans are great opportunities to reflect on the incredible sacrifices made by our military community. As someone raised in the military family, I am especially familiar with the fact that military service comes with a unique set of financial challenges and opportunities. For many, especially the younger enlisted military population, these challenges can be amplified by a complex financial marketplace on top of the already existing responsibilities and sacrifice that comes with military service. The military life cycle, as visualized here by the CFPB, begins with the signing of an enlistment contract at the recruiter's office. The life cycle continues to include basic training, occupational training, a first duty station assignment, and all of the potential life events that come with a military career, such as deployment, 
moving or starting a family, separation from service, obtaining veteran status, and retirement. While this life cycle has not varied much over the years, the financial marketplace regularly undergoes changes. Such changes have included stock market volatility, housing foreclosure crises, bank failures, and even recently, as we're going through now, a global pandemic. Due to financial marketplace changes, life in the military requires financial planning because frequent mobility presents additional challenges. These may include expenses associated with frequent moves, managing finances during deployment and extended family separation, spouses seeking employment, which can sometimes strain budgets, and transition from military service to civilian life and employment. Even with these challenges, according to the Department of Defense survey data, there is good news to report. Members of the armed forces generally exhibit higher levels of financial well-being and financial maintenance when compared to the general U.S. population overall. The survey conducted by the DOD was designed to assess the financial literacy and preparedness of members of the armed forces as required by law. The findings in the latest available report reveal service members were comfortable with their ability to perform a variety of financial management activities, particularly those related to their short-term day-to-day or month-to-month finances. So what do we mean by the term financial readiness? As indicated on this slide, the Department of Defense defines financial readiness as the successful management of a person's financial responsibilities to support their ability to, to perform wartime duties. In the survey I just mentioned, many members indicated they regularly save money and could deal with unexpected financial shock. These practices reinforce financial readiness and help contribute to overall individual and household financial well-being, as described here by the DOD and the CFPB. A key aspect of financial readiness is that it helps better prepare families, including our military service members, to handle not only routine expenses, but also unexpected expenses, and the resulting negative consequences they can have on service members, their families, and by extension, mission readiness of the armed forces. In fact, the detriment of these negative consequences was a primary driver to changes the Department of Defense made to the Military Lending Act over the last several years. Now that we have defined financial readiness, some examples of military financial readiness practices include understanding how to read a leave and earning statement, maximizing savings, minimizing debt, and understanding the impact of credit scores on long-term plans, meeting with a personal financial manager or counselor to review or establish savings and spending plans, including an emergency savings plan, particularly after promotion, reassessing thrift savings plan contributions and needs, attending workshops or seminars on key financial topics available through duty stations, saving on expenses by using the commissary, fitness center, and recreation program offerings, and freezing credit and setting up credit alerts before going on deployment. Financial readiness is also important relative, relevant to entry and sustainability for a military career. For example, the process of attaining a security clearance requires an evaluation of financial history and financial obligations. To maintain a security clearance while serving in the military requires sufficient management of finances be demonstrated. In recent years, service members have joined the ranks of those who are considered most vulnerable to predatory lenders and identity thieves, which reinforces the importance of financial literacy education and helpful resources to those who serve. Ultimately, financial hardship can lead to distraction from readiness and separation from service if the issues cannot be resolved. Debts and negative marks on a soldier's credit report can sometimes be the beginning of an end to a military career. Credit unions play a major role in defending our service members, veterans, and their families against financial threats. Hundreds of defense credit unions across the country and around the world serve millions of people in our military community. And while credit unions serve the needs of their members and promote financial literacy within the communities they serve, 
Here at NCUA, we work to reinforce credit union efforts, raise consumer awareness, and increase access to credit union services. The NCUA also participates in national financial literacy initiatives, including the Financial Literacy and Education Commission, an interagency group created by Congress to improve the nation's financial literacy and education. This commission unveiled its 2020 U.S. national strategy in September, which includes a specific focus on military and veterans issues. Let me conclude my comments by highlighting some of the commitments to our military community launched under the leadership of NCUA Chairman Rodney E. Hood. As articulated in these remarks and others, Chairman Hood considers financial inclusion to be the civil rights issue of our time, to include access to financial services by the military community. For example, in May of this year, the NCUA modified its methodology for determining if a credit union meets the criteria for the low-income designation under its rules and regulations. Under the new approach, military personnel will now be considered in a similar manner as students attending colleges, universities, vocational or technical schools when the NCUA evaluates a federally insured credit union's low-income designation. Also, federal credit unions may augment their existing small-dollar offerings by also providing affordable payday alternative loans under NCUA's payday alternative loan or PALS regulation. NCUA worked closely and diligent with the DOD on its most recent rule change to ensure PALS products would continue to benefit our nation's service members. The chairman also recently announced his Advancing Communities Through Credit, Education, Stability, and Support, or ACCESS initiative, which among other things, seeks to expand access to important credit union services to our military community. All of these initiatives I've just mentioned make it easier for credit unions to provide service members, veterans, and their families with access to safe and affordable credit union services. And now I'll turn it back over to Ken to continue with our agenda. Ken? Thank you, Director Belaris. Now we will hear from my colleague, Joshua Dipert. Mr. Dipert is a veteran of the Armed Forces and a current Navy reservist. He will share some real life experiences of what he and fellow service members experienced when he entered the service in the early 2000s. While this was some time ago, you will find that the lessons learned are very relevant to today's service members. Josh, over to you. All right, thank you, Ken. And thank you for this opportunity to share a few C stories. As Ken mentioned earlier, my name is Josh Dipert, and I'm a Consumer Affairs Analyst with the Office of Consumer Financial Protection. I have proudly served in our nation's military for over 20 years. This includes five years of active duty and over 15 years as a reservist. Within my first year in the military, I did learn a lot of cool stuff, such as taking apart and reassembling an M16 rifle, uh, using my M16 to hit a target at 500 yards away with no scope, driving a Humvee with, no, with night vision goggles. I learned how to effectively throw a grenade and I could spit shine a boot to the point where I could see my own reflection. However, when it came to learning about the power of good credit, effective budgeting, or building a savings, there was little to no training provided. As an 18-year-old recruit receiving steady pay of my first real job, I had no direction of what I should or could do to prepare for my financial future. Living in the barracks, rent-free, with meals provided, it was common practice to spend and not save. This was the work hard, play hard mentality. It was also very common to see brand new BMWs, Mercedes, and other luxury type vehicles in the barracks parking lot owned by young service members. One of my buddies fell into a credit disaster when he financed new rims for his car. His interest rate was between 15 to 20% and he was struggling to make payments. He received collections letters and had to lean on his parents for financial assistance. His credit was heavily damaged and he didn't know how important good credit was until he learned how crippling bad credit can be. Knowing now what I didn't know then, I can say that we did have many resources available to guide us back on track. The problem was, we didn't know about these resources until it was too late. 
this reactive approach came after the damage was done. If our leadership got knowledge of a service member's financial problems, it could jeopardize promotions or requests for annual leave. Apart from promotions, time off was definitely our greatest commodity. Our incentive for making timely payments was to stay out of trouble rather than maintaining positive credit performance. Of course, this incentive kept most of us in line and lenders knew this control method existed. This in turn provided lenders some incentive to liberally approve loan applications submitted by service members. I look at myself as one of the fortunate service members that caught the attention of a military officer. Working in the field side by side, we started discussing IRAs. Yes, we did have a lot of downtime in the field. I had never heard of an IRA up to that point. He took the time to tell me about the difference between Roth versus traditional. He showed me the power of time value of money. He showed me how I could take my little paycheck and invest a minimal amount each month and how it could grow over the years. What he showed me that day got me excited and I opened my IRA. At that point, I felt I had a plan and I was in control of my financial future. At 20 years old, this was the first time I had any type of direction to create a financial plan. Now, back in 1999, when I first joined the military, things were very different than they are today. Improvements to the thrift savings plan offered to military members now include a contribution match. So if the member was to leave the military prior to the 20 year retirement, they now have a nice nest egg to roll over into something else. After 20 years, I still serve today. My base now has a designated financial advisor that is available to all service members free of charge. Our leadership is very vocal on the availability of meeting with the financial advisor and discussing our financial goals and needs. However, despite the improvements made, we still do not have a formal training program in place to provide financial education to our service members. There have been many improvements over the past 20 years and I am certain this will continue to evolve in the future. However, we still have work to do to bridge the gap between reactive solutions and proactive financial readiness training. Thank you. Over to you, Tim. Thank you, Josh. That's a great story uh, that you shared with us. And it was great that you were able to use the resources within the services to help guide you. In recent years, uh, the DOD has made great investments into financial readiness of the armed forces. Uh, so the counseling and information you received uh, should be more readily available now. Uh, and the DOD also set up an Office of Financial Readiness that helps installations and bases across the country implement financial readiness programs within the DOD. Uh, we also at the NCUA work with that office on the Financial Literacy and Education Commission, as Director Belaris mentioned, at the top of the broadcast. And I remember as a, as a young person, I worked for a defense credit union that had great relationships with the PFMs or personal finance managers on base through Army Community Services so that we could deliver financial literacy and education training to soldiers, just like many of the credit unions listening in on this broadcast today. So again, thank you, Josh, for your service and thank you for your remarks. Now we will uh, transition to Shanika Sutton, the Division Director of Consumer Affairs in the Office of Consumer Financial Protection. Shamika will, Director Sutton will, make, will take a deeper dive into some of the resources and services provided through our office. Director. Thank you, Ken. An excellent story, Josh. I will briefly highlight our agency's resources before we hand it over to the CSTB. The Office of Consumer Financial Protection provides support to our military community in numerous ways. The office is responsible for enforcing federal consumer financial protection laws and regulations, rulemaking, and conducting fair lending examinations. In addition, we offer valuable resources the military community can use when making financial decisions. We provide information and resources through the agency's financial literacy and consumer financial protection website mycreditunion.gov, which is also available in Spanish at espanolmycreditunion.gov. Credit unions use the information and learning tools on mycreditunion.gov to provide military members with helpful tips on things such as debt management, steps to purchasing a vehicle, credit reports and credit scores, 
as well as different ways to save money. In addition to providing helpful information for active duty service members, MyCreditUnion.gov has specific material for families of service members and veterans. For example, you can find links to information on personal financial management services on installations. There are also links to GI benefit information, blended retirement systems, and TSP information, among others. On the MyCreditUnion.gov website, you can also find the NCUA Consumer Assistance Center. This is where we accept inquiries and complaints from consumers about their credit unions with the goal of reaching solutions to achieve financial success. We also have a find and answer feature on the site that allows consumers to type in questions and get answers to frequently asked questions such as topics, becoming a member of a credit union, calculating fees and interest on loans, as well as information on different deposit and loan products. One of our most popular features on MyCreditUnion.gov is the What is a Credit Union Information Graphic. This tool helps explain the difference between a bank and credit union, detailing how credit unions are not-for-profit and member-owned. We also have some tools for young people that might help families teach important financial lessons at home. We have a financial adventure game for ages 10 through 15 called Hit the Road. A throwback to the Oregon Trail type game play Hit the Road takes users on a virtual road trip across the country, but the journey is not an easy one. They must save and spend their money wisely to complete challenges along the way. Also, World of Sense is a fun and engaging, kin-friendly game for ages five and up. Users choose a character to participate in a world that the user can build out on their own. Users select one of three levels to challenge their math and matching skills. They switch between the building world and core matching game to earn money. Then, they decide on how to spend the money through what buildings they want to use in their own virtual world. It is available in web-based or app versions. Just simply search for Word of Sense in Google Play or Apple Store. Finally, I will wrap with a reminder about the two very important federal consumer financial protection laws that exist to protect service members. First, the Service Members Civil Relief Act, SCRA, is a federal law designed to ease financial burdens on service members and their dependents during periods of military service. The SCRA offers protections for debts entered into before the start of active duty. Also, the Military Lending Act, MLA, is a federal law designed to protect active duty military personnel, including those in the active National Guard or Reserve, as well as their spouses and other dependents, who enter into consumer credit transactions after active duty begins. Your credit union can help you understand some of the protections afforded by this act. As I conclude, please feel free to contact the NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection with any questions about the information I presented. Thank you. Back to you, Ken. Thank you, Director. And a reminder to our audience, if you have any questions, please type your question into the Ask a Question feature on the console. And now, let's transition to our special guest, Ms. Michelle Glass, Program Manager in the Office of Service Member Affairs at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Ms. Glass will share a very cool interactive financial learning tool developed for the military community. Ms. Glass? Thank you, Ken. Hi, everyone, and thank you for the invitation. I'll first start with our disclaimer. Um, I'm a representative of the Bureau on behalf of the Bureau to present you with this information, but what I'm talking about today does not constitute legal advice or guidance, and the opinions that I'm stating are strictly my own. My name is Michelle Glass. I am, as Ken stated, I'm a program manager for the Office of Service Member Affairs, and I'm also an Army veteran. Today, I'll talk about our office and then what our mission is and how we help support that mission. And I'm going to introduce you to our flagship program called Misadventures in Money Management and then answer any questions that you may have. Our first mission, um, our first statutory mission is to educate and empower service members, veterans, and their families and those that serve them about the financial products and services that we have. We do that through a number of ways, like this webinar, for instance. 
but we also post different blogs, um, Ask the SPD on our website. We talk about different hot topics, um, different policies that impact service members. Um, we also create a lot of education content and brochures that provide accurate and thorough and specific advice on many different topics. And these brochures are available for order by consumers and stakeholders to ensure that everyone is getting the most objective information that exists. And because we're part of the federal government, there's no cost to order the brochures in mass quantities. Our second statutory mission is to monitor complaints that are received by service members, veterans, and their families. And in my office, with the Office of Service and Military Affairs, we review every single complaint that we receive from military consumers. And you can go to our website to see the latest um, on our complaint bulletin that talks about the different complaints that we've received recently regarding COVID related to the various audience or specifically to service members themselves. So please check out that information on our complaint bulletin, which is on our website at consumerfinance.gov forward slash complaints. And third, our statutory mission is to coordinate with other federal, state, and local government agencies on military consumer protection measures. And now what I'd like to do is talk to you a bit about misadventures in money management, where you can find at mem.gov. Program, it's an online education tool that's designed to immerse service members in real life financial scenarios like marriage, deployment, permanent change of station, um, and then the consequences of their choices, just like Josh was mentioning earlier. It offers an interactive training that talks about things such as building up their savings, avoiding impulse purchases, how debt can affect their military career, and then protections under the Service Member Civil Relief Act, or SCRA. One of the unique features of MEN.gov is it provides service members with a learning environment using the latest interactive gaming techniques and game mechanics. Um, if anybody's dealt with younger audience, you understand that we're kind of competing with video games and um, different phone apps, and those things are at the front of their experience. And so what we've done is we collaborated with our partners at the DOD, and we interviewed and did focus groups on young service members and asked them how they like to receive information. And that's how we developed this interactive, um, sort of like a graphic novel, choose your own adventure program. And when they're using this program, they're going to be making decisions for each of the characters, and they'll also do battles with like a zombie invasion, They'll fight off aliens that are coming in from out of space to take over the world, or they'll do some time travel. Now, the great thing about MEM is it uses storytelling about the characters who will go through unique financial situations and challenges, and then the players are asked to make those decisions at each stage of the game or give them a learning objective, and then they have to see if they're successful with it. The one thing that our audience told us about this program is that they love seeing the consequence of those actions. So they can make a great choice or they can make a choice that's less than optimum, and we show them the outcome of that choice if they don't make the best decision. This is an example of one of our characters, Maya, who's trying to figure out how to get more money in her emergency savings and to build wealth. Another thing about the program is that it focuses on early career financial choices that are faced by the newest members of the military and trying to help them avoid costly mistakes in their finances. Um, like this scene here, you can show it shows that it's like a comic strip type illustration, but we also have different facets of how we deliver the content. We use live action video. Um, we also use an audio enhanced version, which I'll show you in a little bit. But this is your field of battle. This gamified mission map is one of the newer elements of the game, which helps players see where they are in relation to defeating financial chaos, which is right there in the back on the mountain. If the players are successful in completing all the character missions and building their team, then they can obtain their certificate of completion, 
which can either be emailed directly to their PFM or their recruiter, their commander, or their instructor or leader, or they can print it, download it, however they want. The program is free. It's available to, for use for all in the United States Armed Forces. Um, in addition, we've got a competitive tracker where each of the services can compete against each other to see who's doing the best and who's got the highest scores. Um, the program was originally developed for those in the delayed entry program or the depth. So before they enter basic training, we would show them this program and work with their recruiters to make sure they um, access the program and learn some of those most common financial challenges that young service members face. Now we've made the program available to active duty, those in the Guard and Reserve, those in JROTC, those in ROTC, and now this month we've made a version of this available for service member families. So you're probably wondering, does this work? Yes, it does. The service members who have taken them, they've shown significant gains across all measured knowledge improvement indicators and noted positive attitude changes about certain financial topics or their financial future as a whole. We've had over 37,000 service members um, access the program and they've shown an average of 17 point knowledge gain after using it. But what's really amazing is that 91% of service members who access misadventures in money management have shown knowledge gain in at least one or more of the topics. We're very happy with the program and we've um, also entered it in several programs where it's won a number of awards and so we're very excited about that. It was also featured in Training Magazine where we won the GameCon Award, Award for Excellence in Learning. One of the recent things we did over the summer um, in response to COVID was we made teacher guides and student activity sheets available. Uh, we did that for the PFM and also for the instructors who were teaching ROTC and JROTC to make it easy for them to um, make them available for their students, um, especially since everybody was working um, virtually. The great thing about MEM is that it can be used not only on a computer, but the students can use it on their, their smartphones. So it works on any Android or um, Apple device, and also on any type of mobile device like a tablet. And as you can see, these teacher guides are customized for each character, and um, you can get those guides at the website that is shown on the screen. The MEM program is very flexible. Again, we've designed it specifically for each audience, meaning our younger audience likes the graphic novel version where they can read like a comic strip version. Um, and those were focused on the students that are age 17 to uh, 20. But we found from our focus group that the older audience members ages 21 to 24, those service members who are already at their first duty station they enjoyed the live action and the audio enhanced versions. So for them, we have those versions of the courses available. Live action basically means it's, it's just a short video chunk where the videos are like three minutes, and then after you watch the three minute video, then you respond with a decision, and that would take you to the next stage of the story. And if you would like to experience this um, for service member family, then I would encourage you to go to mem.gov forward slash family and try the program out for yourself. Why mem? Well, mem is, um, we're dealing with financial issues that can be very stressful and confusing. And while most people know they need a plan ahead or take some action on things, just learning about those financial issues can sometimes be hard. Um, even more so if you're in the field training or you're deployed thousands of miles away in a combat zone, or if you're the family member that's at home handling the finances for your loved one. So that's a, a big part of why we've developed MEM, and this month we've rolled out this feature for service member families because we know what they're struggling with. The program is designed for the younger generation of service members, you know, those 17 to 24, 
And um, the goal is not to replace any contents out there, but the goal is to use this as a supplemental. Again, with the addition of our teacher guides and student activity sheets, you can use it to um, maybe help someone who's having trouble with um, their finances related to purchasing the auto. And so you want them to take the cruise character to learn about different sales tactics and what's the right process for buying a car. And what would we like from you? Well, we would like for you to be a MEM champion. We want you to promote MEM where you can in your sphere of influence and to talk about MEM through, you know, um, accessing the publications, like we have sample comic books um, that you can order. And if you want to put those in your locations, that would be great. We also have little push cards that you can sit on your desk if you have limited space. And all of those things can be ordered free of charge. And the other thing that we would ask that if you try them out and you see something that you think would be a good topic where service members are struggling with at your facility, um, maybe they uh, come in and they have, you know, particular problems related to credit or something like that. Well, tell us about it and we can possibly create a future character that addresses those potential issues. And so we would love to work with you to do something like that. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your time and want to remind you of the website that I shared. Again, you can go to experiencemem at mem.gov. If you're a service member family member, you can go to mem.gov forward slash family. And then to order all the resources that I talked about, the comic books, the push cards, the flyers, you can go to mem.gov forward slash publications. And then this website here at the bottom to access the teacher guides and student activity sheets if you would like to access those. And that is the conclusion of my presentation. If you need to reach out to us, these are some of the websites, excuse me, some of the URLs and websites that we have. And I'll turn it back over to you, Ken. Thank you. Ms. Glass, thank you so much. That was a great presentation and that uh, interactive tool um, is Misadventures is seems like a really great product and it just is an example of how um, our resources can work together. We presented some of our resources for the younger audiences for the K through 12 uh, for military families maybe using for their to educate their children about financial literacy and then you have a perfect complement for the young adult audience. Uh, Misadventures seems like the perfect fit there. So thank you again, Ms. Glass. Now we will move on to the ask a question portion or question and answer portion of our program. If you have a question, please type it into the uh, ask a question box on your left side of your console. Uh, we do have a couple of them in now, and the first one goes to you, Ms. Glass. Um, can anyone use the misadventures game? Yes. Um, once you go to mem.gov, you'll see that there is a self-selection where you can decide if you're in the delayed entry or if you're an active duty service member or you're a family member of a service member. So whichever one applies to you, you would just click that. And uh, that would show you um, the specific characters for who you are. Now, we don't have a civilian version of mem available at this time. Um, right now, this is strictly for our military audience only. Thank you for that answer. Um, another question is, can you explain more about the delayed entry program, DEP, um, what it is and how um, MEM is used to support DEP? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, the DAP or Delayed Entry Program is basically when a person signs a contract with a recruiter to enter into the military. Um, and if there's not a spot open for them to leave immediately, then they're placed in the Delayed Entry Program. Um, that period of time can be anywhere from a week to up to a year. Um, we believe that's a great time for us to educate future service members about the common financial challenges that they would face once they finish their basic training and finish their initial training and enter into at their per first duty station. So we're trying to reach them before they even get into the military and make, um, you know, a bad decision about their money. 
we want to get them educated, let them learn about their SBRA rights and all of those things. So that that basically um, is what the delayed entry program is and how we use them to support those in the depth. Excellent. Another one uh, for you, Ms. Glass. If This question is, if they know someone who is about to join the military, can they send them a link to this program? Yes, we would love for you. Yes, we would love for you to send them to mem.gov um, and let them select which applies to them. You know, if they're in ROTC right now, definitely share this with them because when they go to mem.gov, they will select that, hey, I'm in the ROTC program and I'm under Army, and then we will give them a custom group of courses that fit their particular program. So yes, if you know someone who's about to join the military, um, please send them mem.gov. Excellent. And then we've got a question for both um, CFPB and NCUA about how defense credit unions or credit unions that have service members in the field of membership, how can they spread the word about uh, uh, MEM and uh, the NCUA's financial literacy resources? We uh, do recommend and you know we encourage credit unions to provide mycreditunion.gov on their on their web platforms, they're on their websites, but you can provide a link uh, to specific resources depending on how you build out your financial education resources on your site. Obviously, newsletters are a great way to get out information, especially in this virtual posture with a lot of the workshops being reduced, the in-person workshops being reduced. So there are a number of ways uh, we encourage credit unions to send information out to their members. Obviously, social media is huge. Uh, so sending links out um, with information to our various resources. And like uh, Ms. Glass mentioned, our resources are not meant to replace any existing programs that many credit unions are using. They're meant to augment the resources and the programs you currently have set up. Or if you want to set up our program, they're intended to help you get started. Uh, and with that, uh, Ms. Glass, did you want to add any information? Yes, that was excellent what you just stated, Ken. And the only thing I would add to that is um, please feel free to order those free publications from our website that I talked about. Like we have these huge comic books, and usually those are very enticing. People see all those colors and they see their little monsters on there and, you know, they're wondering, what is that about? And so that's the way that we kind of tease them into going online to do the entire MIM.gov program. So I would encourage you to um, order those free publications if you have space in your um, locations to, to showcase those, that would be great. But also, if you can share them on your website, such as like if you have social channels, um, just put a tweet out there, you know, to talk about it. Or um, have your, um, you know, have your members just, uh, you know, look at it in your newsletter, as Ken mentioned, um, mention it in the newsletters. But those are different ways that we would encourage you to um, share and spread the word about men. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Glass. And uh, our last question is about um, service members protection. Uh, what is an example of the type of protection the SERA provides? Perhaps we can go to Director Sutton for that. Hi, Ken, um, and thanks for that question. So the SCRA, um, it provides many protections, one of the protections of which limits the amount of interest that can be charged on certain loans um, that it, you were incurred prior to entering the military service. And that interest rate cap applies to many different types of loans, such as uh, auto loans, credit cards, consumer loans, and most student loans. So that's just one example of the type of protections that SCRA provides. Thanks, Ken. Thank you, Director. That concludes our question portion of this broadcast, and now we will go to our Office Director, Director Bolaris, for closing remarks. Thank you, Ken. And once again, thank you to everyone listening today, and a special thanks to uh, Michelle from the CFPB for sharing her insights, and thank you again for your service to our country. Uh, I also want to thank our own Josh and Shamika for sharing their insights with us. We hope all of you who tuned in found this information helpful. Please feel free to contact NCUA's Office of Consumer Financial Protection with any additional questions, comments, or concerns. And also be sure to visit mycreditunion.gov 
to access and provide your members with NCUA's financial literacy resources. Ken, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Director. This webinar will be closed captioned and available for on-demand viewing on ncua.gov in the coming weeks. Thank you for tuning in. This concludes the broadcast.